Hey guys, Tommy here, and on this update of my Ellos 200 gallon tank, we're talking flow, corals, fish, and water chemistry. Let's go. So as you can see, most of the corals are off of the floor and glued onto the rocks. And these are the corals that Victor picked out in the farm on the last episode. And I told him I mostly wanted to go with corals that were aquacultured here at Worldwide Corals because they're used to synthetic seawater, LED lighting, and a lot of times just more hardy from the environment that they've come from. So these are mostly LPS and the next round is gonna be mostly Acropora. It's time to turn up the flow. So I talked to my friends at CJ and we've discussed adding more power heads to the tank. So in this tank for flow, we have the return pump that's running about 50% right now. And I have two of the CJ Xtreme SDC Wi-Fi controlled uh, power heads or wave makers, whatever you wanna call them. They're propeller based pumps that go in the tank and you can adjust them. They're Wi-Fi controlled. There's an app that has a lot of programs for them and I want it to up the flow. Now these can go up to 2,250 gallons per hour each, but I noticed that there was a couple dead spots so I wanted to add a couple more. And what's really cool is you could sync the left side and the right side and get alternating flow. So not only are these Wi-Fi controlled through the app, but there's another feature that you can do in the app with these pumps. And I was wondering, why is everyone talking to their pump? What's going on here? Well, you can actually control these with your voice. With the app, they're voice controlled, so you could turn the pumps on or off, you can adjust the flow with your voice, and you can also ask it to check the temperature all by voice command, so how cool is that? So now that I have all the corals glued, or at least most of them, I kind of have an idea where I wanted to place all of them. Always the tank is a work in progress. You want to take a look at the corals, see how they're responding to the placement that you put them in. Are they getting stung by anything? Are they opening up? Are they too close to another coral? Is it easy for you to access to feed them? There's just a lot of things to consider when you're looking at it. And the coral is going to tell you if it's happy or not. So with that said, this is probably not the final place for some of these corals. For example, the torches, that I have on the bottom. I didn't want to put them in a really high flow spot, but they're not getting as much light because they're kind of under a cave. So I think I'm going to move those to a rock closer to the hammer corals, but obviously not touching them, not right next to them or on them. I also picked up a floor frag rack from PNW Customs. This one has this really bright green acrylic, but it's somewhere you can put the corals right on the floor of the aquarium and you don't really have to worry about uh, some conks or sand sifting stars or something knocking over the, the frags and them hitting each other. Or you could put them on a frag rack and just have it low and then slowly acclimate that to the light. But I thought this floor rack was a really cool idea, so I picked that up. Another thing I wanted to mention is the new light schedule that I've been using on the GNC Blu-ray Pros. Before I was at 50% intensity on the blues, 20% on the UV, and 20% on the whites. But I did turn the blues up to 70%, and the UV at 20% and I turned the white spectrum off. And the reason for that is because this room gets sunlight from the window over here uh, for a few hours. So that kind of sweeps across the entire tank and it's getting that natural sunlight, which is more of that white spectrum. So since it's already getting that, I didn't want to double dose it with the white lights from the overhead LEDs. So we'll see how that goes. So far, it's going really well. Still growing corals and everything's looking good and colored up. We'll see when we get the acros in the tank if I need to adjust the LED schedule and add more of the white spectrum to get more growth. Another reason that I think I'm ready for Acropora is I've been doing a lot of water chemistry, water testing, and I've been sticking with my 10% weekly water changes. Really not trying to chase a number, I'm just trying to make sure that everything is right to add Acropora to the tank. And that means phosphates can't be really high, nitrates can't be really high, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium all have to be within the right range. So if I saw something trending up or trending down, I made adjustments. The GHL doser and the Proflex 4 are all set up and it's working perfectly. So I think, again, I'm ready for acros. Let's, uh, let's, how many times am I gonna say that? There's a couple things I wanna add to the tank and that's a UV sterilizer and also an algae scrubber. Uh, before I had a lot of fish in here and unfortunately they got sick and I believe that if I had the UV sterilizer, I think that would have helped. And now I have some new fish additions going through quarantine, so I'll make sure I have that UV sterilizer on hand just to help with any breakout and also help with water clarity. Because I like to feed a lot and have a lot of fish, I think it would be a good idea to have an algae scrubber so you're not seeing algae 
growing inside of the aquarium, but instead it's growing in there. If you guys are using a UV sterilizer and or an algae scrubber on a medium to large tank, let me know. Put it in the comments below of your thoughts and if those are the things I should get. For fish, I'm thinking about a fox face, a couple tangs, some anthias. I think that would be really cool in the tank. Let me know what your ideas are for fish. Put them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe so we can make more videos like this and we'll see you on the next one.